Alright, so continuing on with the uh, complexity masterpiece called Empire of the Sun. And uh, we have done some, we were up last night messing with this thing, uh, taking care of Japanese replacements. We kind of skipped a little bit about that. I don't know how that happened. And luckily we didn't get too far. We didn't even get into the second, the next phase. But uh, Japanese replacements definitely have certain rules. And uh, let me see here. Is that 11.2? Let me see real quick. I'll let you know what I'm talking about. Oh, 11.2. All right. Well, it tells you all here the uh, what the Japanese replacements are based on. And I took a couple of replacements. You have to get your Japanese replacements uh, from uh, available in China track. So we used two replacements. You can see the China track there is down to. And we uh, rebuilt that uh, unit right there, the 1818, what is that, the Korean Army, and uh, also we built another one over here in Hong Kong, the 17th, so that's what we did with theirs, now, uh, oh, what else do I have, some more notes and replacements, is that, uh, oh, I can't see it, ah. Ugh. Allied player cannot save his replacement points. Uh, Japanese player can, but he must use them from the China track. See, that is the only source of replacements for the Chinese for Japanese players at Chinese track. Uh, they have replacements via replacement charts. Oh, the Japanese player gets they have replacements via this chart here. You can see he gets none. He uh, and that's the way the history I think went. Hold on a second. You can see where they were a little bit. They ended up pretty well all on the table the first couple turns, and after that, it's just a matter of a little bit of trickling on in for their naval replacements, and then that's where the U.S. starts cranking out some ships. So, uh, air, air of replacements from both sides, I guess, are coming from the event cards. And uh, the ground replacements come from the, their China track. Oh, what else did we do? Oh, another thing is on Japanese resources. They got a marker here. I've seen that marker uh, right here at three. I was wondering what was up with that. I had to look around, look around. Like I said, it's not the not the sharpest tool in the shed, but it does pertain to my uh, oh gray resource hex blocks. So the uh, hexes with those gray resource uh, or with those gray blocks represent resource. Uh, points, and as we were saying earlier about their Japan being a little bit thin on them up here, you can see there's no great blocks of resources around there. Not to go all the way down in here, but these three spots here are counted. So I put uh, Japanese control markers on it because it really wasn't really wasn't told to me that that was controlled by a Japanese player. Might have been, but I slipped over, finally found it, and make it those resource markers. Because hold on, I'm still sick, and I got to take a sneeze break. All right, so that was pretty much that. We were up to date on that. Then we moved on up here to, uh, let's see. We started getting into the, uh, the bot placement segment, strategic warfare segment. Okay, now uh, on the strategic warfare segment, uh, we roll on the submarine warfare table and we didn't get nothing. So the uh, Japanese hand, was not lessened. I want to look over here though real quick. Hold on, let me press pause. All right, I have strategic bombing that uh, will impact him also, but we don't have that coming in yet. You got B-29 event cards. And the Japanese player received six cards, not including a possible future offensive card they receive. And they received one pass. If they receive five, not including a possible future offensive card, or unless they receive two passes, so that's how they get their passes. And passes are just allow you not to do anything and let the other guy go. It's just what it is, a pass. Huh. I guess it, uh, like in some games, it can be a viable uh, strategic uh, strategy. Cannot receive less than four. Blah, blah, blah. Well, it just tells you about the cards here and everything. Uh, all this other good stuff. National status, we all know that because of Brown blocks represent the points we gotta take over now let's get to this here called uh 
Erasmus bot. So I'm gonna get over here real quick. And that's who you talk about one. Oh gosh. So you go over here to the start, the opening phase. He's got y'all set up to go here. And you go down here to A first. So you start. A says and it took me a while to get find out where these abbreviations were, but he's got them in there. He's got to keep on reading. You, you'll get frustrated. Think, what's the heck? You know, I look all through the book, but if I would have just kept on reading through the Erasmus books, would have told me. But uh, our allied headquarters in the Philippines, Dutch East Indies, and Malaya, uh, out of supply. And they're not out of supply. I'm, I kind of wondered that. I'm like, well, how would they be out of supply? And there, there is kind of a little bit of a... A straight through here, but they can trace their supply line back this way, so everybody's good. Everybody's good. Uh, so the answer would be no, they are not out of supply. You go over here to C and D. Now, both of these got to be these combinations of uh, C plus D had me kind of confused, but they both got to go the same way, so they got both got to be yes. So C is does Japan have three or more cards? Yes is the answer to that one. So you'll go yes if D is that way. If, if any of them are no, you go down here. So that's something they really didn't explain too well. I mean, they did, but you have to go over it a bunch of times. All right, now D. Does Japan control less than 13 resource hexes? Yes. So they're both yeses. We'll go up here to F. Is, this is a killer. Is logistics evaluation value... 20 or more. I mean, who comes up with these names? Is a logistics evaluation value 20 or more? I mean, people, my girlfriend looks at this and goes, what is this? I said, well, you have to know Mr. Herman. He, 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 it's a part of, the, part of the masterpiece of art is this complication. So anyway, F. Uh, and how do you get the logistics value? Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Boy, here you go. Hold on a second. I press pause. You will come down here to the Erasmus page, and it says logistics evaluations, and look, read this. Certain conditions in the Japanese flow charts will ask for a logistics evaluation, logistics evaluation value. It's important to note that one, good thing too, it's important to note that once this value has been determined using the board state at the point in time, and that means the opening phase, and I'll tell you how to change phases here in a little bit what were you doing and what what circumstances let you change phases but uh important to note that once this value is determined during on the board of stated point of time it is set for the rest of the turn so i gotta do that again to calculate this first total up all the operations five one values of non non-military event cards well he had all military event cards so that didn't count and then it says, then, for military event cards, there are several things to consider to determine the value of an individual card. So, oh, my God, there's all kinds of things you have to read. Was this an event that was not allowed to take place? If it was, were there restricted units on it? And if so, you use either this number here or this number up here. Anyway, here are the numbers I got. All these numbers from the card. And this is the logistics evaluation value. And I came up with was a 30, all right? So, it'll tell you here. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. Where did I see that at? Uh, oh, 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 F, F, F. Is logistics evaluation value 20 or more? Yes, under F. So, we just went straight over here, and his uh, strategy for the bot is going to be an aggressive air strategy, air superior, aggressive air superiority strategy. Sometimes I have a good day, sometimes I have a bad. The thing of it is, my mind works faster than my mouth can go. So we'll go over here to aggressive air superiority strategy. There you go. Our objective is number one, to neutralize allied headquarters, which is a no-brainer. Uh, our second uh, priority is to get the Dutch East Indies to surrender, and then Malaya. So we'll be working on the... Uh, Ooh, where are we at here? Dutch East Indies. Where are those at? <laughs> we'll be looking to get these to surrender first. That'll mean getting this hex and this hex. And then we go to Malaya, which is up here. And that's getting those two hexes there. So we got to go for these two spots here is what we're going to be concentrating on as per the flow chart. That's pretty good. It was nice. I mean, I'm glad I didn't have to do this over again. And once you do that on this card... 
find the logistics evaluation value. It's kind of neat, and you know, it's kind of a neat little mechanic. I mean, at first, when you're late at night and you're just kind of you're kind of groggy, and I'm on some kind of cold medicine that's got me zinging at night, where you know I couldn't really get to sleep, so I came out here and dug into it, and sure enough, whew, late at night, and it was scratch your head time. We got it all taken care of. We were ready to go. Uh, now what we will be doing is the Erasmus card selection. We'll be figuring out how you're going to pick which card to use and stuff like that. Now we did, oh, shoot, 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 where did I see that at? Uh, we had a chance to take out, let me see here, where was that? Uh, three cards, three certain cards for the Japanese first hand play and we definitely took those cards that was a historical note let me go back here to the scenarios if i if i'm doing it right hold on i'll find it real quick all right i need to turn one scenario you got here a historical variant for game two hand of cards you use the 17.25 dnf rule so 17.25 is over here there you go and you use a d which is the ally player may actually take and declare card four, the Arcadia Convent, Arcadia Conference is one of the five card draws. We did do that. We did play that. That allows me to play first. Other than that, the Japanese player gets to play his cards first. Oh, D and F. I'm going to go down here and F. Historical Japanese opening hand. We did this one. If the players agree, and I agreed with myself, uh, he takes the three cards. The Colonel Sujai, the V-A-D-M, Kondo card and a Central Force card. So he's got all three of those in there. We'll find out how they want to play them. We have found out that his uh, strategy will be aggressive air superiority. And uh, we'll be back. It's early in the morning. We got all day to break down this game. Hope it's all making sense to you. Uh, we'll be back. Alright, that's the first card played by the uh, by me. The uh, Allied player. is this Arcadia Conference. And there you go. I guess it could have been picked later if I didn't pick it now as an event, which is fine. It, it would have, I guess, it, it, make note, if you don't pick it, it'll. it's a good card to have in a uh, pile in case there's an inner service rivalry. This will negate it. But uh, as a bonus, we grabbed this uh, headquarters unit. Any supply depot, any supply port in Java, Borneo, Sumatra, or Celebes. If no such port is available, there was a such port available. You have to kind of think where the best spot would have been when this card takes is goes out of play. And there's where I put it. Um, yeah, one thing you'll notice down here is we're kind of short the allied player of headquarters units around here. You do have this one up here with a 20 hex range. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You could probably reach down here, but he might be short for this world. So, uh, we uh, want him kind of a backup. If he goes down, this one will kick in and take care, can act, take care of activations all through here. And if he goes down, we can still activate units up here. Um, here's a headquarters unit there, but he only has a 5x range. So we are short on headquarters around here. <laughs> Big time as the allied player. And our main one is getting ready to get hammered. So, uh, yeah, that was a nice card to play. We used it. We put it right there in the... Oh, where is the exact spot? Kendarai. Kendarai. And Celebs. I'm going to say it's Celebs. I don't know how. Let me, see, let me look at that again. Kalebs. It depends on if it's C. Kalebes. Kalebes. Celebes. Or something like that. All right. That is up to date. We are going to do some more reading. And uh, playing this game, we'll give you another drop in a little bit later. But that is everything I think you need to know right now. We are going to work on how the spot is going to pick the cards. And let's get a quick look at these cards here. They're all military cards. They're all black. I don't know how that says about my shuffling, but uh, what numbers are they? 3, 40, 9. There were some of these that were picked out. This one here. Uh, which one? Operation Suji was at it. Kondo. And, uh... Oh, which one was it? Let me find out real quick. Hold on a second. 
All right, these are the three that we are able to pick out ourselves. So I guess they all they all gonna help us achieve a offensives down in here. And then we'll have modifiers for maybe certain units, certain battleships, you know, stuff like that. We'll read the event when we get to it. But now we gotta find out which one of these cards the bot wants to pick. And that'll be kind of interesting to see how they do. Some of these are, uh, decisions are left for the opponent, you know, to, like a, you know, where what would you do? What's the best option? And it's got, I think, die rolls if you come to a certain uh, split. You know, split off if you don't know which way to go. That's the way I do it when I'm playing by myself as a solo player. When it comes to a decision, you know, what, what would the bot do? Attack this one or that one? The other, I'm rolling dice. <laughs> so it's basically, it ain't too hard. I mean, everybody's got their own idiosyncrasies and make it fun. And uh, I'm making notes for my game if I ever, if I ever get around to getting it going. Might be, I think it's going to be a retirement project if I make it that long. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I got my own game and I make notes of all these games' mechanics. I wonder if it's legal to steal their mechanics. Well, I'm not really going to steal them. I'm just going to take ideas from them. Well, I might steal. <laughs> I don't know. They're good. We'll see. Uh, we'll be back. A little note on passes. And it's always good just to look at this and make sure everything's still in order. But I did notice the Japanese pass was zero. And it does say in the scenario rules that the Japanese and the U.S. both start at zero. But upon the first hand to the second turn, the U.S. player gets two. We'll be back. Uh, another big thing I wanted to maybe bring up to you if you're playing this game is make sure you check this out this is a big deal in this game this air zone of influence and uh what it is and what criteria cancels an area zone of influence so there you go that could be a good way to uh cut supply off of ports and stuff like that so there you go we'll be playing that a lot be back all right, another uh, game turn or note that I need to make note of, I didn't, was that we receive one uh, amphibious shipping point per turn. So we're on game turn two. The United States will gain one unremovable amphibious shipping point. So we wanted to move that one on up there. That was from turn one, so there you go. All these are on zeros. There you go. We'll be back. Having some fun with the harassment bot card procedures and first thing we'll do is go to uh, we'll go to it together here we will start to go to a this is for a japanese player because i'm going to be the allies have the have any cards been played for an offensive phase no it's the beginning of the turn so have any cards been played as offensive phase you know what out of this deck no so we'll say no on this one but there have been cards played Oh, no, not this offensive play. So there you go. That takes care of it right there. So the answer is no. Now, this is cool. Sort, sort your cards. Here's the deck. And uh, the value of cards is is this. Your uh, unrestricted cards that don't restrict the, uh, uh, the units that are going to be activated are more valuable than the ones that limit. Only air and ground units may be activated. So you'll put their pile over here. Uh, the next thing you'll look at, I guess, is this value here. So you'll, you got your two different piles. There you go. You're, now, the next thing, the criteria, the next step you look at is their value. So here you go. Unrestricted are more. We'll, we'll put them like this. They're going to join together here in a second, but we're going to go like this because these are more valuable. These here are all tied because they're all threes. These here, this is a more valuable card because it's a three, so you put these two. So what's going to differentiate these two in value? Well, this little number down here, logistics value. This is a three. This one's only a one. This one's a four. So we got these guys in order. All right, these are all tied, so we'll go down here next to the logistics value. Number, big guys, number eight, seven, six, and uh, five. So here's the... You're sorting them in order value for the bot. And this is, he'll want to be playing this card on the right side. Will be the cards he'll be playing, throwing down. He don't really care about these. These are the ones that are more valuable. That's how I came to that conclusion. That is under the sort cards aspect. And you'll go through the rules. If you have any problems, just look at them. That's how you do it. It's real easy. Uh, like I said, oh, hold on a second. Whoop. Uh, 
unrestricted activated cards are more valuable than restricted cards. Out of them, if this one was a five, you know, you'll go put these numbers, you'll put them according to these numbers, and after that, you'll put them according to your logistics value, like I just showed you. We'll put this all together. And this deck here has been sorted out for value. With, these, uh, with this card here being the most valuable. We'll be back after this. We'll sort the cards. We'll go down here to B. Does the hand currently hold uh, more than two cards under B? And we'll go down to yes. We'll go to C. The question is, is the very first card to be played, is this the very first card we played this game? No, it's not the very first. Now, you know what? It wouldn't be. That's a good question because... It's getting in the turn. It's not, actually, because they've played up some other cards in the game. So, from C, we will go to, no, we'll go straight down. This is killer. <laughs> All right, now we're at E. Uh, is there an unrestricted military event available to play? Whoa, let me check that out. Be right back. Well, our first set of cards are unrestricted, so I think we're saying yes to, is there a, an unrestricted military event? event available to play the answer to this one will be yes so under e we will go down here to all right unrestricted event event card strategy all right so when we go here this will tell us what box over here we'll look underneath unrestricted event event card strategy uh unrestricted event let me see if there's one down here uh, hold on. Unrestricted military. Uh, I'm about to straighten this out. We'll be right back. I hit, hit, a, hit a snag there, Mr. Herman. We'll be right back. All right. Well, looking at my... Uh, I'm going over this again. I'm trying to figure this out. I kind of had these things here. I was looking at these things here. They were getting me confused when I found out which one of these were. But these here are a great tool to put your cards when you want to sort them. It's a great sorting tool. A great sorting tool right here. All right. You put your restricted military event cards right here and your unrestricted cards right here. This will help you sort it out. I, I just found this out. This is great. And I, I, maybe I, they should tell you, but use this video to help to do it. Okay. Next card. Uh, it says restricted or non restricted. It's a military, military event card with no activated restrictions. Huh. South or South Seas headquarters only. Uh, ignore the headquarters restriction, so you ignore that. Logistics value, Japanese, Navy units, add to. So this one here is unrestricted military event. It's a military event card with no activation restrictions, land, air, naval, and no battle hex restrictions. This one had a battle hex restriction, so, it's a, so I think this one here is unrestricted military event. So here you go. We're getting them down here. All right. Now this one has an active uh, headquarters restriction only, but it says to ignore headquarters restriction. So we'll go there. Next card here. Uh, any headquarters? Maximum ground. Maximum one ground unit. All right. This one has a restricted. It's because it's a military event card with an activation restriction, and it says here condition maximum one ground unit may be activated so it's just, it does restrict it to it being a uh, with an activation land air a land air or battle hex restriction so it's a land unit ground units this one here will be restricted all right we'll go over here we're doing this all over again and that's why we're called these learn to videos uh, south and south seas headquarters only no big deal Prior to movement, yeah, so this is unrestricted pile. We'll go over here to this one. Uh, any headquarters? Only air and ground units may be activated. So this one here is restricted military event. There you go. Oh. Only Japanese ground units. This here is another restricted military event over here to this one and this changes it because we only got well we'll see what happens here 
maybe it won't change it. Any headquarters, any air and naval units may be activated, but only one brigade size ground unit. Restricted. Card with activation restriction, land, naval, air, or battle hex. Any air, naval. Oh, any air, naval. Don't say anything about uh, ground. Oh, it does say ground. Air, naval, ground. But only one. Huh. That is not a uh, activation restriction limit. They're all three. Uh, bonus. Blah, 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 blah. I think this one here is unrestricted. So we'll put this over here. Now, we'll go by their values. Hold on a second. But we'll do this here. Same. They're all threes. Then there's a two. Within the threes, we want to use that logistics value. So six will be first. No, like eight will be first. Six, four. And then we got to go to the two, so it's down here. Now here, the same thing. We'll go with this number here first. Oh, we have a two threes. With differentiate differentiates those. One's got a seven, one's got a five, so the seven will be first, five second, and then this one here, one. So let me see here. Uh, which ones are more valuable? Be right back. All right, it tells you here, event cards, uh, by restrictions. Highest little bit then. All right, further sort by restrictions, unrestricted first. So we get the unrestricted pile goes up here first. Bang. All right. Now that changes things. <laughs> that changes things a bunch because now this is the top card, not the other one. So here you go. We will see further what we do. Where are we at here? All right. We sorted the cards. Went to B. So our cards B. B says what? Does the hand currently hold two or more cards? Yes. The C. Is this the very first card played? No. Down to E. Is there an unrestricted military event available to play? Uh, is there an unrestricted military event available to play? Yeah, this is unrestricted. It's a military event card. So we say yes to that. Unrestricted event. All right, here's how we find what we're doing. That's cool. We got that straightened out. So now it's unrestricted event, EC strategy. Unrestricted military event, EC strategy. So we will have an aggressive air superiority will be our access to determination. We will go for uh, the Dutch East Indies. Uh, we'll try to eliminate their Ooh, headquarters unit. They don't have a headquarters unit though, huh? Do they? No, I don't see one unless I'm missing one. Is there one underneath here? No, I didn't think there was. Oh, uh, well, could it be this Arcadia? That'd be a good move. <laughs> wow, all right. So, uh, we want to neutralize the Allied H quarters. There will be our first thing. And we want to get, uh, after that, we want to get Malia to surrender. So, Dutch East Indies, this hex here is going to be our priority. We are going to work on what card to use, though. Uh, unrestricted military event. Pick the card with the highest logistics value. All right, let's get on to that. We'll be right back. Hold on a second. All right, all right. Having fun here. Here's what we're doing next. Pick a card with the highest logistics value, but there's a bonus. Offensive bonus pick in the following priority. Paratrooper bonus. And we do have that. The highest logistics value is this card here with a, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, with an eight. Where are we at here? Here you go. Here's the highest logistics value. But this card up here with a five value, where's that at? Or no, with a logistics value of five also has paratroopers. And that's a key thing. So I think we're going to pick Central Force. Let's see what it says. South or South, activation value 5. We get a bonus one with our headquarters, I think. 
Let's read what it says. Prior to movement, place a Japanese control marker in a hex that is within extended range of an active Japanese air unit. Solely by a two hex. Let me read this to find out what it says. And I think this is the card we'll be playing. We'll be right back. All right, basically we're going to have ourselves a pair drop. And this is going to represent it. We get to do this within the extended range of a Japanese air unit. All right, closest ones. Gonna be this one right here. Let's look up this extension, extended range stuff, and everything there. But that's basically what I'm getting to, and I've yet to. Oops, sorry about that. I've yet to check out the card. I'm just initially finding out what it what it means. Uh, area the hex is either after if one the hex is either unoccupied or is occupied solely by a Dutch regiment, and two. The hex is not within an unnaturalized, oh, I'm going to make the Dutch regiment. Huh, that's pretty cool. So something's going to go on here. I'll let you know what happens. We'll be right back. <laughs> First card play. We're having a great time with this game. I mean, you got to work your way through it. But we're having fun, and we're just, you know, trying to keep on our feet. Wait till we get to know how the game goes. It's going to be a breeze. So we're having a good time with this one. A lot of decisions to make. I have some uh, other work i got to do here, though, real quick. So I'm going to take a break. But uh, when we come back... Yeah, we'll find out. I'm pretty sure this will be my first card played. Central Force, will, like I said, we'll find out the priorities or the particularities of the card when we get back. All right, before we call it a video and I upload it to you, to you folks, uh, I want to just make a note here that uh, according to this, our hand will look like this. Pick the card with the highest logistics value. We will do that, but of course... We have to get the paratrooper card first. So the first thing we're going to do as a Japanese bot player is uh, get us a little freebie. We're going to remove one of these Dutch units and get us a control of a hex. It's going to be a paratrooper drop, which is great. It's always cool to get a paratrooper drop. And I don't know if they did that historically. You know, Mark was told, I was watching one of Mark's replays with, uh, oh, I forgot his name. <laughs> Gosh, I subscribed to him and everything. But uh, he was it was one of his playthroughs. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to attempt his name, but uh, he was saying that sometimes it does go historically, so I'm going to find out what's up with that. But more importantly, this card here is out of order because it's not the highest logistics value, but we're doing it because it tells us here to do a pair drop first. So they got us all figured in here on this game. All right. But now when we're done with this, we'll be going according to logistics value. So after we do our pair drop, we could do Operation Midway. Then we get to do this one. We go towards the value. So these are this is his hand. That you can tell how he's going to be put throwing cards down now. So our first card will be up here. And when I come back from my chores, I got some choring to do, as they would say up in Iowa, my buddy's farm. Where he's a pig farmer. And he can't do nothing. They're up at three o'clock in the morning doing chores. You don't get no, you don't get no time off. Them farmers don't know what gaming season is. I mean, I guess they, everybody's got some downtime in the winter, maybe. But oh uh, my, my old boy, now, if you got livestock, there is no time off. Whew. But uh, you know what? I'm still up at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm still, uh, you know, I mean, I might get more times to take naps during the day, but yeah, I'm still up early. But uh, we got chores to do here. And uh, when we come back, we will find out what we're going to do with our first card. We'll put this around here just to make sure we'll be back. Call this a video. Having fun. More fun than a human being should be allowed to have with Empire of the Sun. Beautiful artwork. All right. So continuing on with the uh, complexity masterpiece called Empire of the Sun. And uh, we have done some. We were up last night messing with this thing. Uh, taking care of Japanese replacements We kind of skipped a little bit about that. I don't know how that happened and luckily we didn't get too far We didn't even get into the second the next phase, but uh Japanese replacements definitely have certain rules and uh, Let me see here Is that 11.2? Let me see real quick I'll let you know what I'm talking about Oh, 11.2 all right, well, it tells y'all here the uh, what the Japanese replacements are based on. And I took a couple of replacements. You have to get your Japanese replacements uh, 
from uh, available in China track. So we used two replacements. You can see that China track there is down to, and we uh, rebuilt that uh, unit right there. The 1818. What is that? The Korean Army, and uh, also rebuilt another one over here in Hong Kong, the 17th. So that's what we did with theirs. Now, uh, oh, what else do I have? Some more notes of replacements. Is that, uh, oh, I can't see it. Ah. Allied player cannot save his replacement points. Uh, Japanese player can, but he must use them from the China track. See, that is the only source of replacements for the Chinese, for Japanese players, that Chinese track. Oh, uh, they have placements via replacement charts. Oh, the Japanese player gets they have placements via this chart here. You can see he gets none. He uh, and that's the way the history I think went. Hold on a second. You can see where they were a little bit. They ended up pretty well all on the table the first couple turns, and after that, it's just a matter of a little bit of trickling on in for their naval replacements, and then that's where the, the U.S. starts cranking out some ships. So. Uh, Air, air of replacements from both sides, I guess, are coming from the event cards. And uh, the ground replacements come from the, their China track. Oh, what else did we do? Oh, another thing is on Japanese resources. They got a marker here. I've seen that marker uh, right here at 3. I was wondering what was up with that. I had to look around, look around. Like I said, it's not the, not the sharpest tool in the shed, but it does pertain to my... Uh, oh gray resource hex blocks so the uh, hexes with those gray resource uh, or with those gray blocks represent resource uh, points and as we were saying earlier about their Japan being a little bit thin on them up here you can see there's no gray blocks or resources around there not to go all the way down in here but these three spots here are counted so I put uh, Japanese control markers on it because it really wasn't really wasn't told to me that that was controlled by a Japanese player. It might have been, but I slipped over finally found it and make it those resource markers. Because, hold on, I'm still sick and I gotta take a sneeze break. Alright, so that was pretty much that. We were up to date on that. Then we moved on up here to, uh, let me see. We started getting into the, uh, the bot. Placement segment, strategic warfare segment. Okay, now, uh, on the strategic warfare segment, uh, we roll on the submarine warfare table and we didn't get nothing. So the uh, Japanese hand was not lessened. I want to look over here though real quick. Hold on, let me press pause. All right, have strategic bombing that uh, will impact him also, but we don't have that coming in yet. You got B-29 event cards. And the Japanese player received six cards not including a possible future offensive card they receive, and they receive one pass. If they receive five, not including a possible future offensive card, or unless they receive two passes. So that's how they get their passes. And passes are just allow you not to do anything with the other guy go. It's just what it is, a pass. Huh. I guess, it, uh, like in some games, it can be a viable uh, strategic uh, strategy. Cannot receive less than four. Blah, blah, blah. Well, this just tells you about the cards here and everything. Uh, all this other good stuff. National status, we all know that because the brown blocks represent the points we gotta take over. Now let's get to this here called uh, Erasmus Bot. So I'm gonna get over here real quick. And that's who you're talking about one. Oh gosh. So you go over here to the start, the opening phase. He's got you all set up to go here. And you go down here to A first. So you start. A says, and it took me a while to get find out where these abbreviations were, but he's got them in there. He's got to keep on reading. You, you'll get frustrated and think, what the heck? You know, look all through the book, but if I would have just kept on reading through the Erasmus books, it would have told me. But uh, our allied headquarters in the Philippines, Dutch East Indies, and Malaya, uh, out of supply, and they're not out of supply. I'm, I kind of wondered that. I'm like, well, how would they be out of supply? And there, there is kind of a little bit of a a straight through here, but they can trace their supply line back this way, so everybody's good. Everybody's good. 
so the answer would be no. They are not out of supply. You go over here to C and D. Now, both of these got to be these combinations of uh, C plus D had me kind of confused, but they both got to go the same way. So they got both got to be yes. So C is does Japan have three or more cards? Yes is the answer to that one. So you'll go yes if D is that way. If, if any of them are no, you go down here. So that's something they really didn't explain too well. I mean, they did, but you have to go over it a bunch of times. All right, now D. Does Japan control less than 13 resource hexes? Yes. So they're both yeses. We'll go up here to F. Is, this is a killer. Is the logistics evaluation value 20 or more? I mean, who comes up with these names? Is the logistics evaluation value 20 or more? I mean, people, my girlfriend looks at this and goes, what is this? I said, well, you have to know Mr. Herman. He, 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 it's a part of the part of the masterpiece of art is this complication. So anyway, F. Uh, and now how do you get the logistics value? Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Boy, well, here you go. Hold on a second. I press pause. You will come down here to the Erasmus page, and it says logistics evaluations. And look, read this. Certain conditions in the Japanese flow charts will ask for a logistics evaluation, logistics evaluation value. It's important to note that one... Good thing, too. It's important to note that once this value has been determined using the board state at the point in time, and that means the uh, opening phase, and I'll tell you how to change phases here in a little bit, what, where you're doing and what, what circumstances let you change phases. But uh, important to note that once this value is determined during on the board of state at the point in time, it is set for the rest of the turn. So i got to do that again. To calculate this First, total up all the operations, 5-1 values of non-military non event cards. Well, he had all military event cards, so that didn't count. And then it says, then, for military event cards, there are several things to consider to determine the value of an individual card. So, oh my God, there's all kinds of things you have to read. Was this an event that was not allowed to take place? If it was, were there restricted units on it? And if so, you use either this number here or this number up here. Anyway... Here are the numbers I got. All these numbers from the car. And this is the logistics evaluation value. And I came up with was a 30. All right. So it'll tell you here. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. Where did I see that at? Uh, oh, 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 F, F, F. Is logistics evaluation value 20 or more? Yes. Under F. So we just went straight over here, and his uh, strategy for the bot is going to be an aggressive air strategy, air support, aggressive air superiority strategy. Sometimes I have a good day, sometimes I have a bad. The thing of it is, my mind works faster than my mouth can go. So we'll go over here to aggressive air superiority strategy. There you go. Our objective is number one to neutralize Allied headquarters, which is a no-brainer. Uh, or, or second uh, priority is to get the Dutch East Indies to surrender and then Malaya. So we'll be working on the, uh, ooh, where are we at here? Dutch East Indies, where are those at? <laughs> we'll be looking to get these to surrender first. That'll mean getting this hex and this hex. And then we go to Malaya. Which is up here, and that's getting those two hexes there. So we got to go for these two spots here is what we're going to be concentrating on as per the flow chart. That's pretty good. It was nice. I mean, I'm glad I didn't have to do this over again. And once you do that on this card, find the logistics evaluation value. It's kind of neat. And, you know, it's kind of a neat little mechanic. I mean, at first when you're late at night and you're just kind of, you're kind of groggy and I'm on some kind of cold medicine that's got me zinging at night where, you know, I couldn't really get to sleep. So I came out here and dug into it and sure enough whew, late at night and there was scratch your head time we got it all taken care of we are ready to go uh now what we will be doing is the erasmus card selection we figured out how you're gonna pick which card to use and stuff like that now we did oh shoot 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 where did i see that at uh we had a chance to take out let me see here where it was at uh, three cards, three certain cards for the Japanese uh, first hand play. 
and we definitely took those cards. That was a historical note. Let me go back here to the scenarios. If, I, if I'm doing it right, hold on, I'll find it real quick. All right, underneath that turn one scenario, you got here a historical variant for game two. Hand of cards, use the 17.25 DNF rules. So 17.25 is over here. There you go. And you use a D, which is the allied player may actually take and declare card four. The Arcadia Convent, Arcadia Conference is one of the five card draws. We did do that. We did play that. That allows me to play first. Other than that, the Japanese player gets to play his cards first. Oh, D and F. I'm going to go down here at F. Historical Japanese opening hand. We did this one. If the players agree, and I agreed with myself, uh, he takes the three cards. The Colonel Sujai. The VADM Kondo card and the Central Force card. So he's got all three of those in there. We'll find out how they want to play them. We have found out that his uh, strategy will be aggressive air superiority. And uh, we'll be back. It's early in the morning. We got all day to break down this game. Hope it's all making sense to you. Uh, we'll be back. All right, that's the first card played by the uh, by me. The uh, allied player is this Arcadia Conference. And there you go. I guess it could have been picked later if I didn't pick it now as an event, which is fine. I, it would have, I guess, it, it, make note if you don't pick it, it'll. it's a good card to have in a uh, pile in case there's an inter service rivalry. This will negate it. But uh, as a bonus, we grab this uh, headquarters unit. Any supply depot, any supply port in Java, Borneo, Sumatra, or Celebes. If no such port is available, there was a such port available. You have to kind of think where the best spot would have been when this card takes is goes out of play. And there's where I put it. Um, yeah, one thing you'll notice down here is we're kind of short the allied player of headquarters units around here. You do have this one up here with a 20 hex range 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You could probably reach down here, but he might be short for this world. So, uh, we uh, want him kind of a backup. If he goes down, this one will kick in and take care, can act, take care of activations all through here. And if he goes down, we can still activate units up here. Um, here's a headquarters unit there, but he only has a 5x range. So, we are short on headquarters around here. <laughs> Big time as the allied player. And our main one is getting ready to get hammered. So, uh, yeah, that was a nice card to play. We used it. We put it right there. And... Oh, where is the exact spot? Kendari. Kendari. And Celebs. I'm going to say it's Celebs. I don't know how. Holy shit. Let me look at that again. Kalebs. It depends on if it's C. Kalebes. Kalebes. Celebes. Or something like that. All right. That is up to date. We are going to do some more reading. And uh, playing this game, we'll give you another drop in a little bit later. But that is everything I think you need to know right now. We are going to work on how the spot is going to pick the cards. And let's get a quick look at these cards here. They're all military cards. They're all black. I don't know how that says about my shuffling, but uh, what numbers are they? Three, forty, nine. There were some of these that were picked out. This one here. Uh, which one? Operation Suji was at it. Kondo. And, uh... Oh, which one was it? We can find out real quick. Hold on a second. Alright, these are the three that we are able to pick out ourselves. So I guess they all... They all gonna help us achieve uh, offensives down in here. And then they'll have modifiers for maybe certain units, certain battleships, you know, stuff like that. We'll read that when we get to it, but... Now we got to find out which one of these cards the bot wants to pick. And that'll be kind of interesting to see how they do. Some of these are, uh, decisions are left for the opponent, you know, like a, you know, where what would you do? What's the best option? And it's got, I think, die rolls if you come to a certain uh, split, you know, split off if you don't know which way to go. That's the way I do it when I'm playing by myself as a solo player. When it comes to a decision, you know, what, what would the bot do? Attack this one or that one? 
or the other, I'm rolling dice. <laughs> so it's basically, it ain't too hard. I mean, everybody's got their own idiosyncrasies to make it fun. And uh, I'm making notes for my game if I ever, if I ever get around to getting it going. Might be, I think it's going to be a retirement project if I make it that long. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I got my own game and I make notes of all these games mechanics. I wonder if it's legal to steal their mechanics. Well, I'm not really going to steal them. I'm just going to take ideas from them. Well, I might steal them. <laughs> They're good. We'll see. Uh, we'll be back. A little note on passes. And it's always good just to look at this and make sure everything's still in order. But I did notice the Japanese pass was zero. And it does say in the scenario rules that the Japanese and the U.S. both started zero. But upon the first hand to the second turn, the U.S. player gets two. We'll be back. Uh, another big thing I wanted to maybe bring up to you if you're playing this game is make sure you check this out. This is a big deal in this game. This air zone of influence and... Uh, what it is and what criteria cancels an area zone of influence. So there you go. That could be a good way to uh, cut supply off of ports and stuff like that. So there you go. We'll be playing that a lot. Be back. All right. Another uh, game turn or note that I need to make note of. I didn't was that we receive one uh, amphibious shipping point per turn. So we're on game turn two. The United States will gain one unremovable amphibious shipping point so we wanted to move that one on up there that was from turn one so there you go all these are on zeros there you go we'll be back having some fun with the harassment bot card procedures and first thing we'll do is go to us we'll go to it together here we will start to go to a this is for a japanese player because i'm going to be the allies have the have any cards been played for an offensive phase? No. It's the beginning of the turn, so have any cards been played as offensive phase? You know what? Out of this deck, no. So we'll say no on this one. But there have been cards played. Oh, no, not this offensive play. So there you go. That takes care of it right there. So the answer is no. Now, this is cool. Sort, sort your cards. Here's the deck. And uh, the value of cards is, is this. Your uh, unrestricted cards that don't restrict the uh, uh, the units that are going to be activated are more valuable than the ones that limit only air and ground units may be activated. So you'll put their pile over here. Uh, the next thing you'll look at, I guess, is this value here. So you'll you got your two different piles. There you go. Your now the next thing that criteria the next step you look at is their value so here you go unrestricted are more we'll, we'll put them like this they're going to join together here in a second but we're going to go like this because these are more valuable these here are all tied because they're all threes these here this is a more valuable card because it's a three so you put these two so what's going to differentiate these two in value well this little number down here logistics value this is a three this one's only a one this one's a four so we got these guys in order all right, these are all tied, so we'll go down here next, the logistics value, number big guys, number eight, seven, six, and uh, five. So here's the, you're sorting them in order, value for the bot, and this is, he'll want to be playing this card on the right side, will be the cards he'll be playing, throwing down, he don't really care about these, these are the ones that are more valuable. That's how I came to that conclusion. That is under the sort cards aspect and you'll go through the rules if you have any problems just look at them that's how you do it it's real easy uh like i said oh, hold on a second what uh unrestricted activated cards are more valuable than restricted cards out of them if this one was a five you know you'll go put these numbers you'll put them according to these numbers and after that you'll put them according to your logistics value like i just showed you we'll put this all together and this deck here has been sorted out for value with these uh with this card here being the most valuable we'll be back after this we'll sort the cards we'll go down here to b does the hand currently hold uh more than two cards under b and we'll go down to yes we'll go to c the question is is the very first card to be played is this the very first card to be played this game no, it's not the very first. You know what? It wouldn't be. 
That's a good question because it's the beginning of the turn. It's not actually because they played up some other cards in the game. So from C, we will go to no. We'll go straight down. This is killer. <laughs> All right, now we're at E. Uh, is there an unrestricted military event available to play? Whoa, let me check that out and be right back. Well, our first set of cards are unrestricted, so I think we're saying yes to is there a, an unrestricted military event available to play? The answer to this one will be yes. So under E, we will go down here to, all right, unrestricted event, event card strategy. All right, so when we go here, this will tell us what box over here we'll look underneath. Unrestricted event, event card strategy. Uh, unrestricted event. Let me see if there's one down here. Uh, hold on. Unrestricted military. Uh, I'm about to straighten this out. We'll be right back. I hit, hit, a, hit a snag there, Mr. Herman. We'll be right back. All right. Well, looking at my... Uh, I'm going over this again trying to figure this out and I kind of had these things here I was looking at these things here and they were getting me confused when I found out which one of these were but these here are a great tool to put your cards when you want to sort them it's a great sorting tool great sorting tool right here all right you put your restricted million trailer event cards right here and your unrestricted cards right here and this will help you sort it out I, I just found this out this is great and I, I, maybe they should tell you Use this video to help to do it. Okay. Next card. Uh, it says, restricted or non-restricted. It's a military event card with no activated restrictions. Huh. South or South Seas headquarters only. Uh, ignore the headquarters restrictions, so you ignore that. Logistics value. Japanese Navy units add to. So this one here is unrestricted military event. It's a military event card with no activation restrictions, land, air, naval, and no battle hex restrictions. This one had a battle hex restriction. So it's a, so I think this one here is unrestricted military event. So here you go. We're getting them down here. All right. Now this one has an active uh, headquarters restriction only, but it says to ignore headquarters restrictions so we'll go there next card here uh any headquarters maximum ground maximum one ground unit all right this one has a restricted it's because it's a military event card with an activation restriction and it says here condition maximum one ground unit may be activated so it's just, it's, it does restrict it to it being a uh, but with an activation land, air, a land, air, or battle hex restriction. So it's a land unit, ground units. This one here will be restricted. All right, we'll go over here. We're doing this all over again. And that's why we're called these learn through videos. Uh, South and South Seas headquarters only, no big deal. Prior to movement. Yeah, so this is unrestricted. Pile over here to this one uh, any headquarters only air and ground units may be activated so this one here is restricted military event there you go oh. only Japanese ground units this here is another restricted military event over here to this one and this changes it because we only got well we'll see what happens here Maybe it won't change it. Any headquarters, any air and naval units may be activated, but only one brigade size ground unit. Restricted. A card with activation restriction, land, naval, air, or battle hacks. Any air, naval. Oh, any air, naval. Don't say anything about uh, ground. Oh, it does say ground. Air, naval, ground, but only one. Huh. That is not a uh, activation restriction limit. They're all three. Uh, bonus, blah, 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 blah. I think this one here is unrestricted. So we'll put this over here. Now, 
we'll go by their values. Hold on a second. Well, we'll do this here, same. They're all threes, then there's a two. Within the threes, we want to use that logistics value. So six will be first, no, like eight will be first, six, four, and then we gotta go to the two, so it's down here. Now here, same thing. We'll go with this number here first. Oh, we have a two threes with differentiate differentiates those. One's got a seven, one's got a five, so the seven will be first, five second, and then this one here, one. So let me see here. Uh, which ones are more valuable? Be right back. Right, it tells you here, event cards. Uh, my restrictions. I saw the bit then. Uh, Alright. For their sort by restrictions, unrestricted first. So we get the unrestricted pile goes up here first. Bang. Alright, now that changes things. <laughs> that changes things a bunch because now this is the top card, not the other one. So here you go. We will see further what we do. Where are we at here? All right, we sorted the cards, went to B. Uh, so our cards B, B says what? Does the hand currently hold two or more cards? Yes, the C, is this the very first card played? No, down to E, is there an unrestricted military event available to play? Uh, is there an unrestricted military event available to play? Yeah, this is unrestricted. It's a military event card. So we say yes to that. Unrestricted event. All right, here's how we find what we're doing. That's cool. We got that straightened out. So now it's unrestricted event, EC strategy. Unrestricted military event, EC strategy. So we will have an aggressive air superiority will be our access to determination. We will go for uh, the Dutch East Indies. Uh... We'll try to eliminate their Ooh, headquarters unit. They don't have a headquarters unit, though. Huh. Do they? No, I don't see one unless I'm missing one. Is there one underneath here? No, nope, I didn't think there was. Oh, uh, well, could it be this Arcadia? That'd be a good move. <laughs> wow, all right. So, uh, we want to neutralize the Allied H quarters. There will be our first thing, and we want to get, uh, after that, we want to get Malia to surrender. So, Dutch East Indies, this hex here is going to be our priority. We are going to work on what card to use, though. Uh, unrestricted military event. Pick the card with the highest logistics value. All right, let's get on to that. We'll be right back. Hold on a second. All right, all right. Having fun here. Here's what we're doing next. Pick a card with the highest logistics value, but... There's a bonus, offensive bonus pick in the following priority, paratrooper bonus. And we do have that. The highest logistics value is this card here with a, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What's an eight? Where are we at here? Here you go. Here's the highest logistics value. But this card up here with a five value, where's that at? Or no, with a logistics value of five, also has paratroopers. And that's a key thing. So I think we're going to pick Central Force. Let's see what it says. South or South, activation value five. We get a bonus one with our headquarters, I think. Let's read what it says. Prior to movement, place a Japanese control marker in a hex that is within extended range of an active Japanese air unit. Silly by Dutch the two hex minute. Oh, you can read this, find out what it says, and I think this is the card we'll be playing. We'll be right back. Alright, basically we're gonna have ourselves a pair drop. And this is gonna represent it. We get to do this within the extended range of a Japanese air unit. Alright, closest ones. I'm gonna be this one right here. Let's look up this extension extended range stuff and everything there, but that's basically what I'm getting to, and I've yet to oops, sorry about that. I've yet to check out the card of this initially finding out what it what it means uh area the hex is either after if one the hex is either 
unoccupied or is occupied solely by a Dutch regiment, and two, the hex is not within an unnaturalized, oh, I'm going to make the Dutch regiment. Oh, that's pretty cool. So something's going to go on here. We'll let you know what happens. We'll be right back. <laughs> First card play. We're having a great time with this game. I mean, you got to work your way through it, but we're having fun, and we're just, you know, trying to keep on our feet. Wait till we get to know how the game goes. It's going to be a breeze. We're having a good time with this one. A lot of decisions to make. I have some uh, other work I got to do here, though, real quick. So I'm going to take a break. But uh, when we come back, yeah, we'll find out. I'm pretty sure this will be my first card played. Central Force. And like I said, we'll find out the priorities or the particularities of the card when we get back. All right, before we call it a video and I upload it to you, to you folks, uh, I want to just make a note here that uh according to this our hand will look like this pick the card with the highest logistics value we will do that but of course we have to get the paratrooper card first so the first thing we're going to do as a japanese bot player is uh get us a little freebie we're going to remove one of these dutch units and get us a control of a hex it's gonna be a paratrooper drop which is great it's always cool to get a paratrooper drop and i don't know if they did that historically you know mark was told i was watching one of mark's replays with uh oh i forgot his name <laughs> gosh i subscribed to him and everything but uh he was it was one of his playthroughs uh, I, I, i'm not gonna attempt his name but uh he was saying that sometimes it does go historically so i'm gonna find out what's up with that but more importantly this card here is out of order because it's not the highest logistics value, but we're doing it because it tells us here to do a pair drop first. So they got us all figured in here on this game. All right. But now when we're done with this, we'll be going according to logistics value. So after we do our pair drop, we could do Operation Midway. Then we get to do this one we go towards the value so these are this is his hand that you can tell how he's going to be put throwing cards down now so our first card will be up, up here and when i come back from my chores i got some choring to do as they would say up in iowa my buddy's farm where he's a pig farmer and he can't do nothing they're up at three o'clock in the morning doing chores you don't get no you don't get no time off and farmers don't know what gaming season is i mean i guess they everybody's got some downtime in the winter maybe but oh my boy, my old boy! Now, if you got livestock, there is no time off. Whew. But uh, you know what? I'm still up at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm still, uh, you know, I mean, I might get more times to take naps during the day, but yeah, I'm still up early. But uh, we got chore to do here, and uh, when we come back, we will find out what we're going to do with our first card. We'll put this around here just to make sure we'll be back. Call this a video. Having fun, more fun than a human being should be allowed to have with Empire of the Sun. Beautiful artwork. Okay, really don't want to make this video too long, but before I can move on, I have to point out something really kind of important. And uh, we did all this, I think, the right way, but over here, I was saying that the first thing we're going to have to do is neutralize an allied headquarters. As soon as you get this uh, little deal here, Aggressive air superiority. This neutralize allied HQs. You'll go down here. Neutralize allied HQs. It's I got a seven. Execute air naval attacks with enough strength limit to. It tells you what you're going to be doing. All right. So we have to go up here to neutralize. This will be our first priority, and they'll have a yellow box over here for it. And it says here that we will neutralize the Philippines. There you go. I'm going to have to try to figure out what all this means. 025. 25%. 5%. For, oh. But the Philippines headquarters is the first one I think that we're supposed to go for. So that would be this hex here instead of going for this hex here. Like I said, I'm figuring this out. It's a learn through. But I just wanted to let you know that before I move on to what I thought I was going to do, there's other things over here. Especially this event strategy. I don't know what to do, how to kick this box in. Now, there are um, FOOQs, which are future, uh, where I should it? future offensive queue. And that's a card you can put away for future use. So I was wondering how they were going to take care of that. There's some way that they are, and I haven't got it figured out yet. But just to let you know, 
we aren't moving on yet. We are trying to figure out some more uh, stuff here. But we did get that figured out instead of uh, just neutralizing Allied Headquarters. And then underneath here where it says um, Dutch East Indies Surrender. Well, you got something down here uh, that you'll you do step by step. So the first one we're going to do is neutralize Allied HQs. And we come down here. It says something about the Philippines. I gotta figure out what these numbers mean and all the other stuff, but that's where we're at. Now we'll call it a video and we'll be back. Hopefully I have something figured out when we come back. <laughs>